So can you renounce your white privilege? That is a question many have been asking after a video was circulating on Twitter of many white people in, uh, I guess, a park were taking a pledge where they were all renouncing their white privilege. Now, before we go into any other arguments, let's watch the video. About racism, anti-blackness, or violence. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way possible. I will use my voice in the most uplifting way possible. And do everything in my power to educate my community. And do everything in my power to educate my community. I will love my black neighbors the same as my white ones. I will love my black neighbors the same as my white ones. So just some tweets I'm going to read as well before I get into my own opinion. So Nancy Wang Yun said, We need a discussion of what white privilege means. It isn't something you can renounce, but something to recognize and risk to benefit those who lack privilege. At Tokyo Tower Star says, white people lying on the ground and saying we renounce our white privilege means nothing. It magically doesn't go away. You have to work towards dismantling the whole system which caters to you. And then Garbage Ape said, I hate the masturbity ritualization of which only serves as a distraction and solves absolutely nothing. Aaron Bastani tweeted, race is a social relation. You can't renounce privilege that requires transforming asymmetrics of economic and political power which have been shaped by race over centuries. Cyber Lexi Witch tweets, you can't renounce white privilege, this is narcissistic on behalf of these white people, this is purely performative, the racist structures that exist in society don't go away by you doing this, this is just to make you feel like it's not your fault as if anyone cares. So I don't know exactly what started that pledge and who led it, I don't know if, if some uh, African Americans told these people to pledge away their white privilege, somehow I doubt it but of course I don't know. But it is kind of symbolic of a lot of white understanding of, I guess, race. Because, of course, like people were saying, you cannot renounce white privilege in a system which is inherently racist unless you dismantle that system. So a lot of you might think this is actually quite a liberal thing to do because they are unaware of, of what the general problem is. Because, yes, you, you can say that you're going to be better, you're going to educate your friends, you're going to try and renounce your white privilege... But at the end of the day, when a policeman is driving down the street, he's still not going to take a second look at you, really, if you're white, and he is probably not going to harass you. There's statistical evidence that if you are in violation of a drug law, that there is a way less likely chance you're going to be arrested, and there's a way less likely chance you're going to be convicted and put in prison. You're just going to be generally harassed less by the police. Of course, we see these white liberal types ring the police on just black people standing, minding their own business. That isn't going to start happening to white people who've renounced their white privilege. If you're white, you're still going to benefit in this institutionally racist system. You're still going to have a leg up on people in the job market. It's likely if you're white, you're also going to be born in better economic circumstances because in countries like the UK and the US, non-white people disproportionately make up those in poverty. So no matter what you say about your white privilege, it's always going to exist as long as we still exist in this system. Now, why I don't personally like this sort of thing is, I know it's a right-wing talking point, but I don't believe as a white person myself, you should necessarily feel guilt over what our ancestors did. Even though you guys might think I'm English, I'm actually half Irish and all my ancestors are from Ireland. So it's a bit different for me because probably my ancestors didn't own slaves or own property. They could have. Some of them could have been involved with the British government. But because my family were also Irish Catholic, it's unlikely. But still, if I knew, for example, that maybe 300 years ago, I had a relative who owned like a plantation in America or in Jamaica, I wouldn't necessarily feel bad. Now, what I would do, if you know you have a racist history in your family, is I would take that and use it as motivation to be better. So I could, you know, not be racist for one thing. I could be at the forefront of these discussions. I could use my white privilege and the elevation my white voice inherently gets in a racist society and use that to help the people that maybe my family have directly been involved in historically oppressing. I don't need to start saying sorry to people. I don't need to start saying I renounce my white privilege because at the end of the day, I didn't do those things. Now, of course, you hear that line of thinking from the right wing, you know, white guilt. Why should I feel bad for anything my ancestors did? But the problem with the right wing is they just stop there. 
It's why shall I apologize? I'm not going to even acknowledge what my ancestors did. I'm not going to acknowledge they created a system of racism which directly benefits me. That's the difference in what I'm saying. I'm saying acknowledge what they did. Acknowledge what people like you have done and use that to better your society and make it less racist. And you should be disgusted by what your ancestors did and that should be the motivation for you to be an anti-racist activist or something like that. Educate yourselves on why this still matters today and how the historical legacy of things like the African slave trade, things like you know the colonialism of the British or America or France still impacts relations and outlooks of your people today. Take that and help educate other people so we can all live in a better society. Now that might seem too optimistic, but I'm gonna go into the economic side, of course, it goes without saying that we live in an economic system that is inherently racist. Now, capitalism itself, as much as it's inherently exploitative, it's not inherently racist. But of course, modern capitalism was developed in, I guess, lockstep with the European age of colonialism, where, of course, the European empires gained all their wealth from exploiting non-white countries from using African slave labor. And if they weren't using direct slave labor, they were exploiting people like Egyptians, like Chinese, like Indians, and treating them awfully and exploiting them, paying them very, very little to really construct this empire for them. Now, in terms of global capitalism, you can still see this at play. It's no coincidence that, you know, the most powerful countries in the world, like France, the UK, America, Belgium, Germany, all these different European countries, they were the ones who had empires. And it's not surprising then that they have the biggest companies and corporations. And it's not surprising that these corporations, while based in Europe, while based in America, use non-white labor from their former colonies and they obviously treat them awfully and pay them very little wages. They will also prop up local authoritarian governments that directly benefit them to keep these people poor as a cheap labor source. Now that is the racism of global capitalism in I guess in a more microcosm in the place like the UK or the US. Of course, it's still racist because non-white people disproportionately make up the bulk of really hard manual labor jobs, really hard jobs, you know, like nursing homes, hard jobs like carers, cleaners, and just the manual laborers. And of course, there's nothing wrong with doing those jobs, but the reason it's disproportionately made up of people who aren't white is because non-white people have less opportunities in society, have less opportunities to get a good education, to get out of the poverty cycle and get a job while you might think it's not as meaningful and I would argue that's the case a lot of the time, get a job that pays more and is less strenuous on your physical health and most of the time your mental health as well. So if you want to actually renounce your white privilege, you have to not only educate people on our racist system, educate your friends and family and you know, to your real core, recognize you are living in countries where you have an inherent and very, very strong benefit based on the color of your skin. You've also got to combine that with pushing for a change in the global and local economic system, which due to the age of European empires is inherently racist. And this is especially true if you live in a white majority country like the UK or US. Obviously there are some nuances to that. You see the rise of countries like China and India, but I'm not gonna get too much into it, but you must also understand that just because India and China aren't, you know, non-white countries that have benefited from, you know, their legacy as European empires, India and China do still have a lot of racism and they still benefit from a racist capitalist system. You only have to look at what China is doing in African countries to see this. While simultaneously displaying Africans as racist caricatures in China and treating black people in China awfully. But to sum up, how you renounce your white privilege is working towards making your society less racist, and this includes education, but also pushing for a change to the economic system, which exploits non-white bodies to make white people wealthy, and it has done for the last 400 years. You don't have to grovel, you don't have to say sorry and make yourself feel better about it. Don't bother with that stuff and do the other things, because that is all a token, that is all a performance, it doesn't matter, it doesn't change anything, it doesn't do anything, it just makes you feel better. If you feel bad about what's happening right now in America and what is happening with racism across the world, you have to take direct action and that can come in a variety of forms, but again, the end goal must be changing 
our economic system. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you're on social media, follow me at The Cavernacle, mainly on Twitter, that is the big one, but also Instagram and Facebook. Reddit is another big one for me, so r slash The Cavernacle for my subreddit, u slash Tommy Cahill 1995 for my personal Reddit. My Patreon is in the description, so please check that out. Also, my WordPress is there, and if you made it this far, thank you for watching.